Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. This is vlog number two of two, and this one is the technical part. So if you're not an up and coming producer or not interested in producing music, I suggest you skip this one as we're gonna get super technical on this one. I'll show you something you've never ever seen from me before. I'll show you an exclusive step-by-step -step on how I got to finish this remix for Firebeats Ignite. During the course of this night, I was thinking about what kind of kick to use. Actually, I was thinking of using the same kick drum as I used in my Human Again remix. That sounded really good. A lot of times people ask me, how do you do it? How do you vlog? How do you train? How do you combine everything? How do you still make music? And the answer is very simple. Just be very effective. And you know, I'm not gonna spend two weeks on this remix. Actually, I'm gonna try and stomp it out in a couple of hours and you can watch me. So I'm just gonna find this kick drum. This is the project. Let me see where the kick drum is. Here, kick, boom. Drag it in here. There's the kick drum. I don't even need to program it anymore. Right now, the first thing I'll do is to replay the melody that Firebeats used. Unfortunately, they didn't give me the MIDI. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna use a silent preset sound to try and figure out the right uh, melody for this. So now I guess I have the melody all set up. Let me just like fix a note here and there. So I'm just going to make all those notes on the, the ones and the threes equally long, just to be safe. And now I actually want to play a little bit with it because I have something funky in mind that I want to try. So I'm just going to keep this. I'm just going to name it original melody. I'm going to try and make something funky out of it. I'm going to use another quantize on this as well. So I'll, I'll just use the logic swing for this. Swing, let me see. 55, let's try 50. So, okay, so there, there it needs to go. A little bit shorter. So, I like that. It's cool. Let me see if I can get it sounding a little bit less robotic. See, so if you adjust the notes a little bit longer and shorter, it'll sound less programmed and more natural. Okay, I want to try that over here as well. So I might just want to lose the, the going up on the end and just have some steady funky notes in there. Cool, I like it. So it's, it's there now. And now I need to go and find some layering for this. So a half hour has passed. I was just skipping through some presets and basically I made all like layers of how the synth needs to sound in the drop right now. And I added a second layer. I have a ton of layers over here. So another pretty standard layer right here. So it's Nexus attack lead. Did I do something? I made the attack a little bit less so it didn't sound as, as tabby. More layers coming up. The one I just added doesn't really sound right tonally, but in the whole scheme, and, and you'll get to hear this, it'll make sense. So these are uh, one, two, three, four, six layers of sins right now that that are the lead. It doesn't really matter if you if you choose the standard sounds or anything, just as long as the total sounds a bit unique. I am not sure yet if this is the lead sound, if it's special enough, but only time will tell if I if I'll add another layer or if then I'll swap everything around. So with this, I'm just gonna uh, layer it with like a sub bass. I just have your standard silent deep sub preset. 
so as you can see here, I uh, I EQ'd it a little bit, so it uh, it adds up to all the layers. I put a sidechain compressor on here because I'm just gonna let you hear it with the kick drum as well. Some people ask me what I produce with when I'm on the road, so these Shure uh, in-ear headphones. So I just EQ'd all the layers according to to these. So with a lot of EQing of, of these uh, layers, it kind of goes extreme. So wherever I feel the, the signal or the frequency should stick out, I'll just add a little bit of extra. So this goes way overboard. Look, it's like 12 dBs even. Technically, this is all wrong, but in the whole scheme of things, it fits in place. So right now, I'll just... Um, Try and add some housey beats, some funky beats. I'm just going to program those. It's going to be a little bit of search through hi-hats and percussion. It's a half hour later. Let me just let you hear the hi-hat I programmed. So very housey hat. Actually, I uh, put the, the quantize on the hat onto another quantize. So it's, it's like a 60 swing right now, whereas the lead is like a 55 swing. But this 60 swing is that housey feel uh, you always hear in like future house tracks. So I just chopped the hi-hat off and programmed like a shorter one in between to give it that funky feel. So yeah, I gotta come clean with you. I have no shame in using my uh, Vengeance Essential House percussion. I still love those. Tweak it a little, EQ it a little. So I'm just gonna let you listen to the loop I have up until now. So it's gonna be the drop. So yeah, it's kind of like a, a synthy festival feel with like funky housey beats. I think the contrast is really nice. And so this is something I learned from Chocolate Puma early on is to have contrasts in your track because how do you know if something's white when you don't know black? Right now, I pretty much have the drop for this track. I would say not bad for about one and a half hour of work right now. Next stop, Thailand, stay tuned. So I got to my hotel room here in Thailand in Bangkok so unfortunately, I only have a half an hour before my uh, pickup call. But what I'll do right now is go through what I just did in the car within that half an hour drive. Just plain and simple, uh, arranged and changed a few things. So for instance, on the drop, I had this idea of just keeping the melody like the original and then eight bars after, switch it up to that funky type of deal. So changed all the layers. So I basically copied everything from the original melody into the group with all the layers. Actually, I forgot to tell you about uh, some of the compression uh, I did on the layering right here, a little bit of EQ as well. So I don't know if you're able to hear this, but here's the layers without compression and without EQ. <laughs> Luckily, everything is well balanced already, so it sounds kind of good. So here it is with all the plugins on there. I contained the frequencies a little bit, a little bit on the low end, um, a little bit off of the high end, and then I gave some extra attack using this compressor right here. You can see in the settings, attack is two milliseconds. A sidechain compressor as well for when the kick comes in. I always love to put a little bit of chorus in there. Chorus adds a little bit of like that ravey detune, a little bit of a stereo width as well. If you're uncertain what it does, just put up the dry wet, put it up to like 76, so in this case 76%, or even higher to really hear what it does. And just make it very subtle. So right now it's 17%, so there's a little bit of that going on in the lead. So right now the drop sounds like this, then. When the beats come in, it sounds way funkier now, and I, I like that. So 
I've been working on the climax in the car. Again, this is all concept. So I had a like a thing in my mind where I was just like, okay, so it needs to be that. Da -da 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 and then I was playing the Hardwell remix of Ping Pong last night. And in that climax, I liked the programming of the snare. So I combined both and built built a climax that way. So in the first four, it just goes straight. Da -da 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 and when the snare hits, I I pitched up all the layers to just go into like a climax. <laughs> funny on the end there's a little ew, which is completely an accident because all the layers are are releasing the the pitching up I did but it sounds really cool and I'm just gonna keep it here's my favorite wind effects that I almost use in every track I think you can find it in my uh, splice project of stepping to the beat um, and I just simply added uh, a vengeance sweep at the end for something extra so again, this is kind of like a blueprint of the of the climax and even on the lead. I've still been thinking of flirting with some Don Diablo type of sounds maybe uh, to layer it upon, but I'm not sure yet. So this is all work in progress. I'm gonna be going to the festival now. It's looking huge. And after the festival, I'll tweak the track some more and I'll keep you updated. So it's the Friday here in Bangkok. I'm actually a day off. So yesterday I emailed the Firebeats guys saying that I needed a little bit more than just the instrumental and if they could send me parts. I figured I needed the ARP from the original, the lead sounds as well, because I kind of want to layer them in my drop as well. Look, we got all the ARPs and the synths, synths together. So synths together is what I'm looking for right now. I'm just going to put them in my project. Okay, so they are... They're side-chained, but I should be able to work them. Okay, and they're on the grid as well. This is the true story right here. In this vlog, I learned how to get the computer audio and get a FaceTime video as well. Usually I would use my GoPro or my iPhone, but I'm all sorted now. More high-quality tutorials coming up in the future. Let me see how these layer in my drop. Oh, I hear something. I think I put in the wrong notes. So, uh, do, 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 instead of... Okay, so that goes higher. Let me fix that. Okay, so I fixed that now, and now I need to put it in all the other layers again. In this case, I'm just going to copy-paste. There we go. That's good. It's really handy to, to ask the original artist for the midis, so you don't need to spend so much time in actually figuring out the melody. So I guess what I'm looking for in the original layering is uh, that kind of like grid, the kind of like distortion. EQ on here. Okay, so exactly here, this is the area that I'm looking for. And I don't need the high end here. This was about a 30 minute session actually, and a lot has changed. I'm excited to let you hear it. First, I'm gonna talk about professor stuff. Sometimes I get in the comments that my stuff is too basic. The way I explain things, the way I handle things is too basic, but there's a reason for that. But for now, I just wanna show you some professor stuff I did within my track right here, right now. Because I use the logic swing on everything, it wasn't blending in really well with the original layers because of the swing. So what I did is I took the layer, I made it its own audio track, then I selected 
the whole sample and then went into insert warp markers. So what this does, it'll set warp markers on the grid and with these warp markers, you can go into your swings and just add the swing into it. So now it has the same groove as the rest of the layers. Still though, it didn't blend in really well with uh, the other layers. What I did to help that is I put a sidechain compressor on the original sample and within that sidechain, I had the lead group coming in as the signal. So this means they'll make place for each other and they'll make room for each other. The funky section, I left my notes because I think they sound a little bit more dramatic than the original Firebeats one. So I needed to chop the Firebeats layer which I did to, to fit the da -da 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 -da. And then after, I did the same thing with the warp markers. But now I, I actually put the, the Logic Swing 60 on it. So now the Firebeats layer swings in a very funky way on this, this part. <laughs> kind of missed a, like a freaky Don Diablo layer, as I would say in my head, thinking in concepts. The best synth right now, and this is a trick as well, to do the freaky uh, Don Diablo stuff is actually the Nexus synth. You want those type of wah, 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 wah. You can do that by adjusting all the cutoff and envelopes and resonance right here. And the key thing is to have the attack, usually you call it modulator, but uh, Nexus talk within the filter modifier. Uh, you need to have the attack a little bit later, the cutoff, so it goes like whoop, whoop. There's not many edit features within Nexus, but this is really handy, really easy, and really quick. So I ended up with this. Which sounds cool, but I just needed an extra layer in there to have it sound more freaky. I just stumbled across this, uh, the, the Vox binary voice within the voices. I guess because using voice samples is very popular right now, I, I just thought of it and thought of using it. So within this as well, I, I've, I tweaked the attack and the cutoff and the resonance and found this sound. So I just played a little bit with the notes, moved it up and down a little bit, and the two combined sounded pretty cool. What I always do with the Nexus as well is that there's a ton, a ton of reverb and delay on there usually, and it sounds so epic, but it's a little bit much on the layering. So I turned this off, and I use the short reverb on here, a very short reverb. I call this the Diodo reverb because he uses it a lot. So this is without, this is super dry. And now with the, the short reverb. Finally found what I've been looking for. The result is quite unique. It'll stand out, it'll still sound like something a lot of DJs would would play and this is what you want. You always want that edge where you have a track that a lot of DJs would play but not to sound like everyone else. So here, here goes. So in this feeling right here, me bobbing my head is the best feeling ever where you find what you've been looking for. Obviously it's gonna need some, some little tweaks still and I'm gonna keep you in the loop. But this feeling, no one can take away from you. Even if you put down in the comments that you don't like this, I had my fair share of losing my mind to it. So what I'll do right now to rest my ears and to think about this in concepts again, I'll go out to train, I'll have some dinner with Justin and then later I'll come back to 
to whip up a breakdown, incorporate the vocal, and try and finish the track. And of course, I'll be keeping you in the loop of the full progress. Okay, so here I am in the car out to dinner. Right now I'm thinking of concepts of the build-up and arrangement and everything. So I'm thinking of making just a climax build-up. Then the first break is going to be emotional or the second break is going to be emotional. And I'm thinking of doing something special just before the second break. So all of this is going around in my head while hanging out, I guess. Hey, what's up? It's good to be back. It's back to the program right here. I'll share with you my ideas right now that I came up with. So this is break number one right now. This is just literally eight bars of only this. I'm just thinking I might just need to add like a, like a festival clap over here. I actually already have a loop that does that. Pretty much ready to go. Just give it a little bit of a delay because it sounds a little bit early. I might just try something atmospherical in here as well. Just something subtle like a like a long string or, or a pad. So for pads I like to use the absinthe synth. And it should just be literally one note that uh, that's a like a like a patty type of thing. Maybe something like this. I do like that. So uh, I'm just gonna put like a sub under it. So you know this, uh, in this section right now, there's kind of like an anticipation going on by just holding notes like that. And then I forgot to turn on my microphone and record my audio, so I hope you didn't notice that too much. But uh, right now I should be sounding good. Same story, I'm just pulling out the note over the whole eight bars building some anticipation right here. Towards the end of a breakdown, you always kind of like want the sub out of there. This is because the drop will hit harder if you don't have any sub right on the end of a climax. I use this in DJing as well. Maybe put this an octave up for fun. Fading this out, but you see how cool uh, of a layering the, the extra pad brings. Sounds really fancy, but as you can see, it's not a lot of work. I'm just gonna add like a plucky thing. So I do like going to the Nexus and using the plugs in there. There's a ton of plucks. They're easy, they're sounding good. Why waste your time? Actually, I might just use that for the climax then. So I'm pretty happy with this. Just I'll just delete the, turn off the delay on here and reverb. Just put my own in there. I think I'll make a long one. EQ it a little bit. So over here, because it's an octave higher, it just needs a little bit of a different type. So just automate that. Double it. And then uh, towards the end over here, I'm just gonna fade that out, adding a volume. So now you can see the parts where I, I shut off and left you out and did my own thing. How fast I actually work. I just really like working effective. Time is always tight and... <laughs> and 
there it is, the first break. So now I'm just going to work on the second break. And I had an idea of this, so dun, da, 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 dun. so it should be a filter type of loop that goes dun 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 dun. So basically, that would be repeating this. So see if this is what I wanted. Yeah, dun 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 dun. So one more. I'm just gonna insert here. And I'm going to copy this here, and then I'll need to have the dun 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 Same story. Ah, oh, dun dun. Now it needs to go down. Musically, it needs to go down. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, I'm gonna get it back to that. So this, this goes on the end. Musically, that makes sense. So luckily, I have a musical ear. And so you see, I, uh, concepts are everything. Basically, anything you want, you can think of. If you've been producing long enough, you'll know how to instantly do it and get it right. So now I want this part to be filtered. So I'll need to reroute everything I have, basically, to a, like a filter channel. This is going to be the filter channel. I'm going to have the filter channel root into my pre-master because later on I'll have all my master chain plugins on my pre-master. This can go out, go out to the master, and every element I just used in this track So everything will go to the filter channel. So on the filter channel, I will just simply put an EQ as a filter. I So mind you, this is an experiment. I heard it in my head. I'm not sure if it's working, so I'm just gonna check it out. Cool. So now what the idea was is to have the ARP on here, the ARP of the original. Now that's working right here, and I'm very happy it's working. This section I want to have the vocal on as well, because the vocal is an integral part of the track. And over here I do want to grab some chords with it, uh, because uh, it's just such a nice section to have a little bit of, I guess, emotion in there. Just thinking what, what to grab right now, because I don't want to really want to go like super EDM on it. Maybe just some kind of string. So let me just grab the Korg M1 for this. Strings, there's a ton of strings over here. Recording now, mind you, I might play it a little bit weird because of the small keyboard. I do want you to know that I've had over 15 years of piano lessons right now, so I'm quite aware I'm doing it a bit funny right now. I'll fix that note right now, that's not a problem. Putting everything on grid. Okay, so obviously I'm not gonna have it over there, I'm gonna have it over here. You know what, I'll just have some underlaying layers of bass pad. I do like the distortion that's going on in there. So I guess in the second section I can just add the rock clap in there again. And that's gonna be in here. 
just there, and then I'll just copy this climax right here. And you know what? I'll just copy the whole thing, the drop as well. And I'll just paste it right there. So we'll get the rock clap here. Probably not gonna have the plucky thing in here. And I'm just gonna put the string in here, but at an octave higher. So it's funny, these are some type of uh, drama rules I've learned over the years that I know add some extra anticipation. So high strings kind of feels like something's coming, something's exciting, and you can, you can just add them as like an extra little package of energy. So I'm not going to use the ignite, 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 ignite. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Maybe it should just be one ignite at the end. Ignite. Maybe night, 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 ignite. So the synths uh, are actually on still when the vocal comes. So I might just want to have the whole channel mute right here. Ch -ch -ch chop it out. I'm just going to put in a simple wind splash, I think. Let me just browse in here. Uh, effects. You know what? I like that. Easy, quick. There we go. You know what? Maybe just pitching it up and up or down. Splash. I do like this, but I do miss a little bit of white noise splash, so I'll just grab that from here. Reverse this. No warping. Just using this. So the two combined make for a whole new splash, and because I transposed the, the original splash, added an ex a little bit of extra wind on there, now it sounds like something different, but it's a really quick process. Now I'm just gonna listen through the whole thing and then I'll see you know, about the intro beats, outro beats, and try and add some effects in there as well. And it's here. I've done it. The whole arrangement is here. So towards the end, uh, the second drop, I did copy and paste it, but I, I changed it a little bit. And so towards the ending, I thought it was a good idea to just keep that that boom, 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 going, but without the filter this time. And then on just like literally 16 bars towards the end, just have it being stuck on one note. So sounds like this. And then it'll be stuck on one note, and then towards the end, I'll just add reverb to that Firebeats layer, and it's gonna be a long reverb, 15 seconds, and you'll see the dry wet over here. I automated it. Oh, I did a little bit of a cut there, but so I'll fix this. When you take out the bass of a track, especially towards the end, it'll sound like an ending of a track. These are just like common rules. So over here, I'll start with a full sub bass, and then towards the end, I'll just automate it with this little volume controller here, and towards the end, there's no bass in there. So that's the ending. Intro, very simple. I literally just copied this loop. Why I did that? Because all of the beats are in there. And so I copied them and just made like a 16 bar opening over here just before the first climax starts. And I just took out all the melodies in there so it's basically beats. I straightened out the hi-hats so the hi-hats are literally, um, so just this little piece you can see because it's looped here. Just this little piece will be playing. So it's just a very simple tss, 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 tss. 
So DJs use these to mix the next track. So if there's too much melody or things going on, apart from beats, uh, then it's always very hard to mix in. Hey. So it's very funny that, hey, that's my, my vocal. Some chance I randomly recorded, some pers a little bit of a personal touch, I guess, and I like it in there. I did add the sub in here, so uh, sub bass in the intro is a good thing. And then when it went into the first break, there was too much of, a, of an instant cut in there, so I needed a little bit of a fade. I literally just uh, faded in the lead group right here. Just added the extra effects. This is from like an old folder I have with samples of, of previous tracks of mine. You know, I use the Vengeance as well, but I like putting those personal touches in there as well. Oh, there's this really cool reverse kick that I put in there just before the drop, so it, it, it actually like swoops you in before the first drop, so. It's quite subtle, but it's, it's basically a, a kick reversed. Well, this was a, a, a hall kick and I reversed it. I put this volume control, automated it, for it to be active in the breakdown. So literally the breakdown is 5 dB lower than the drop. What this means is that the drop will hit hard. So obviously there's a lot of stuff going on, snare drums, climaxes and everything, and you still want the drop to hit the hardest. That's what this does. If the climax is harder than the drop, the drop will never like get people moving. Fun fact, we've been listening to this track in mono all this time. So Next up is the mastering process of this track. I'm gonna put everything in stereo. Time for a 30 minute nap, rest the ears, and we'll get into the mastering process after. So I made it out to Yangon, Myanmar, former Burma. So while traveling, I thought of three tracks that I could reference my mix down to. You can see them over here, I chose them here. Uh, a Kirby track, because his productions are amazing. Drop Gun, Nobody which is a track in a similar style I can reference to, and Mem and Echo, the Umet Oskan edit, still sounds incredible when it comes to mastering, so it'll be good to go back and forth with those tracks. But before I'm gonna go and do that, I'll need to pan everything out and rearrange the channels. So everything was mono because on, the, on my master output, <clears throat> I had this little volume control with the width on 0%. So I'm just gonna take that off for now, see how everything sounds. Just gonna make sure the sub is in mono of the kick drum. And actually I wanna do the same for the, the Firebeats layer right here. So I'm just gonna copy this. So with this EQ in the MS mode, you just make sure that all the low frequencies are in mono and that the rest of the frequencies stay in stereo. might just actually add a stereo widener on the little clap. One of my favorite stereo plugins right here. Um, it's free and it'll always give you extra stereo width without giving you a phase problem. Actually, I'm just gonna try and see how the lead group is when it comes to stereo width. So this one can be nice and stereo because it's like a mid type of sound. With this last layer I added, I only want the higher frequencies to be stereo. Okay, and with this layer, I want to auto pan on there. You just saw me do it, doing it manually. I kind of liked it, so I'm just gonna do that over here. So you can see it going over here. Give 
giving the hi-hats a little bit of pad as well. So it's in this section where you pan it all out, where you bring your track to life. Just basically filling out the frequencies and uh, it's always allowed to make all the mid elements super wide and then when it comes to hi-hats and percussion you can just go a little bit left and a little bit right. Okay, so everything should be good and panned out now. What I'm gonna do now for mastering is to put it back in mono again and I will need to give all the outputs a different output specifically to my pre-master channel. So the filter channel will go to the pre-master channel and then everything that's filter channel here is good, but all these white ones that say master should go to the pre-master. I'm gonna move my master chain out to my pre-master now. And now I'm just gonna take the most busy loop of my track and we'll use that for my mastering. And I, my three reference tracks I've uh, put in already and I made sure that they're in the busiest loop as well. So they run out through my master channel, which currently has no plugins. All my track goes out to my pre-master channel where my master chain is and my pre-master channel goes out to my master channel again. So the perfect circumstances for me to switch back and forwards. Okay, so a little bit more volume. bit more high end on the kick drum. So the extra layer can use a little bit of mid and high. Still feeling as if my track lacks a bit of sub, so see if I can tweak that over here. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a little bit more room here, and then add a little volume over here on the... Okay, I am gonna add a little bit of harmonic distortion on the end to just get my high frequencies a little bit more crisp. Exciter is what I use for that. And I want this on, I want this on dual, and then I'm gonna crank this up. Good, I'm just gonna put an EQ here right before the harmonic exciter. So right now it sounds pretty good, it sounds pretty similar. Probably will need some tweaks after floor testing. So now I'm just gonna test it out in stereo and see if the stereo imaging is as wide as the reference tracks. Sounds pretty good too, but I am gonna try and put some stereo widening on here as well. 
just in case, especially kind of like in the mid lows, I'm missing some wideness. Turning this on, stereo size right here, and I'm just gonna go and make it wider in this section. <laughs> So I'm just gonna give this an extra listen on uh, low volume. I'll listen through the whole track. So I will just render a version one and then test it on the festival right here in Myanmar. And then after I'll come back to you and tell you what I need to fix or I need to add. I had an awesome time out in Myanmar and although it got super wet and we were fearing for the equipment, DJing then and there made me realize how lucky I am. I get to experience stuff like this. The remix is pretty much finished. I am actually still waiting for Firebeat's feedback. Two things I needed to change. Number one, the arpeggio needed to be a little bit softer in the mix in the second break. And number two, on the second drop, I just needed to take out eight bars just to make it a little bit more DJ friendly. I can't believe I nailed the mix down. You saw it all happening here and I'm so happy you were part of it. I want you to be part of next week's vlog as well. It's going down in the weekend right now. So this Friday, this Saturday, as you are seeing this, for the first time ever, you can send me your demos on my Twitter. It's at LateBackLuke. And who knows, maybe you'll get signed. I will make a vlog about this and I'm very curious about the tracks that'll come in. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out. And I will catch you back here next week on the true story and the real life. Until then, Bells up, brave safely, and salute.